Welcome to the December 7th. How's that? How's that? County Planning Commission. Oh, oh, hang on. Hang on. <laughs> All right. Right, right, right. All right. Great. Okay. Welcome to the December 7th, 2022 meeting of the Thurston County Planning Commission. The Thurston County Planning Commission is a citizen's advisory committee to the Board of County Commissioners on land use planning matters, such as the comprehensive plan and zoning ordinance amendments. Planning commission actions are in the form of recommendations to the county commissioners who are the final decision makers. All planning commission meetings are open to the public. Citizens are welcome to observe all planning commission briefings and work sessions. We welcome comment on those topics for which a public hearing has not yet been held. My name is Eric Casino. I am this season's chair and reside in District 2. We will start our introductions here in the boardroom, and I don't believe we have any commissioners online, so we'll all be here. So we'll start down here with Commissioner Hessinger. So, Hessinger, District 1. Helen Wheatley, District 1. John Nelson, District 3. Jim Simmons, District 3. Doug Carmen, District 2. Derek J, District 1. Gold Hansen, District 3. Thank you very much. With that, has everybody had a chance to look at our agenda? And if so, I'd entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Siri, discussion on this agenda. Uh, can we call for the vote? Call for the vote. Mr. Commissioner Okay. Commissioner Wheatley. Aye. Commissioner Nelson. Aye. Commissioner Simmons? Aye. Commissioner Kerman? Aye. Commissioner Day? Aye. Commissioner Hansen? Aye. Commissioner Casino? Aye. The agenda has been accepted. With that, has everybody had an opportunity to look over the meeting minutes for November 16, 2022? And if so, I'd entertain a motion. So moved. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion on the meeting minutes from November 16th? The motion is to approve the meeting minutes, accept the audio as the official meeting record. Uh, call for the vote. Mr. Passenger? Uh, Mr. Wheatley? Aye. Mr. Nelson? Aye. Right. Commissioner Simmons? Aye. Commissioner Carmen? Aye. Commissioner Day? Aye. Commissioner Hanson? Aye. Commissioner Sino? Aye. The meetings are accepted. With that, we'll move on to um, the Public communication portion of our meeting. Uh, we're going to start out here in the court or in the boardroom, and then if we have anybody online, we will go through the rules for online participation. But we will start with Christy White. Good evening, commissioners. Well, here we are, the end of an era in this building, and I didn't want to miss it because there's been so much that's happened over the years uh, with all of the hard work that you guys do um, that is thankless, including the staff as well. Um, and I don't take that for granted how much of your time is volunteered on behalf of the citizens of the county. Um, I recently uh, came across the book, Thurston County, Water, Woods and Prairies, um, edited by Sandra Crowell and Shirley Sterling. And it's a history of Thurston County. And if you haven't seen it, it's a remarkable um, 
uh, timeline of, of our county and talks about exactly what I think you've heard me over the, the years um, fight for, which is the woods and, and the prairie and the water, how valuable it is here uh, in this county. So I just wanted to, to thank all of you. You all come with such diverse backgrounds and talents and skills. Um, everyone here is, you know, probably have for various reasons, but brings um, a deep appreciation of, of the county and its future. And so I look forward to seeing you, you know, um, at the new place, as they say in real estate, location, location, location. Um, it does have an impact and I'm sure there'll be a change in environment and, and how um, things happen and, and transpire with the new location. But again, thanks to all of you, each and every one of you for the continued uh, grace and uh, delivery of service to our county. So thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have anybody online that would like to offer testimony to the Planning Commission tonight? There's nobody online, is there? There's four people online. I see no hands. No hands. All right, well, that will conclude our public testimony portion of the meeting. We'll move on to our work session on the Grand Mountain sub-area plan with Caitlin Nelson and Amelia Schwartz. Well, while we figure out some PowerPoint, I guess I'll get started. Uh, I'm Kate Nelson, Green Lane Planning Commissioners. Uh, Planning Commission has received a staff report that included a, uh, an overview of changes with staff summary and reasoning. Um, as well as options for recommendation uh, and attachments that cover background information and some updated land use memo from Thursday Regional Planning Council, the most recent draft sub area plan and draft code, uh, a map of the land use and zone amendment requests, and the written public comments for the Planning Commission's preparation for this meeting. Uh, since the date in 2022, we have and uh, I believe four work sessions. Uh, we had a public open house that had attendee from, attendance from uh, several planning commission members. We had a public hearing that received uh, 14 public testimony and uh, I believe about 30 written public comments. Uh, we're going to structure this meeting by going through each of uh, the four parts um, of this project uh, with a check-in vote before we move on to the next one by doing a thumbs up, thumbs down, uh, temperature check sort of vote. Uh, and then staff will ask for the two recommendations at the end uh, once we've gone through each topic. One recommendation would include the sub-area plan, the Thurston uh, County Code that is drafted, and then the land use amendments that do not require an extension from the EPA. And then there will be one recommendation that does include whether or not there is an extension of each year. And we will start with the grid notes of area plan. Uh, at this point, I might be able to do this presentation from memory, but um, <laughs> I know that you were seeing PowerPoint. Do we? Uh, it's not open for some reason. Thank you. I can try. Give me a second to pull it up. Yay. Now we should be on slide five. Keep going, Kate. Is this, is uh, this where we're starting? Almost. 
Okay. Uh, the original changes to the federated plan include updates to the land use data, the population forecasts, uh, housing supply and demand, uh, revised goals and policies, a third version of the transportation chapter based on uh, the regional plan proposal transportation study uh, and some other text changes. Uh, more recent changes based on previous feedback that staff has received include uh, providing my background information from the 1996 plan, information on agriculture, the aquifer, employment statistics, and uh, the sewer and water systems. My next slide. Uh, at this point, can we move an up down vote on how we're feeling about recommending the adoption of the Southern Plan? I like the idea of adopting a new sub area plan. I mean, I think there's some changes. We need to make some changes, everything, but on the whole, I think we're moving in the right direction. Commissioner Wheatley? I don't know. I don't think it's done yet. I, uh, you know, it was a little late, but I, it took me several hours to, to work on some revisions to the introduction. Um, I feel that it lacks a uh, robust discussion of public involvement. I think there are some uh, factual errors in there, like the, there was one that I corrected in that where there was an attribution, I think, incorrect. And more, uh, more concerned are some of the elements. I'm really concerned about the historic and archaeological resources element because I don't feel it's done um, really. Uh, way that you would expect for a GMA. Um, and yeah, there are just some some elements to it. I, I kind of the on the as you know I've asked um, many times for more on housing. It's hard to imagine a sub area plan that doesn't take a really hard look at housing. And there are no goals or actions in housing. And um, I I requested that there be some depth development of demographic information. And I don't accept that that couldn't be done um, because I think that that information is readily available from the census by um, block, census block. So I have some issues where I feel that it's just not um, ready. And then more deeply, um, the more I've sat with it, and um, especially as I've listened to um, public comments and read the public comments from the open house, I almost feel like it's worth bouncing this whole thing back to the Board of County Commissioners and asking a really fundamental question. And, and that is, um, is the CUGA primarily for an environmental reason, which is to have a water and sewer system to protect the aquifer, which is consistent with um, the Growth Management Act, or is it to create growth um, or to, to play, create a growth repository, as it were? I know that Rochester, the Rochester sub-area plan says that it is, but I'm not sure that the folks in Grand Mound agree. They want to keep it rural. It's legitimate to do that. In the fact, um, when I was reading the, um, the RCW on UGAs, it said that Ideally, if you have a, a UGA that's for growth, it should really be a city related to a city. Whereas if you have a UGA for other reasons, like that you need an urban level of service, which is what this one was originally designed for, uh, that's another kettle of fish. And I think we need a lot more clarity about what the primary intent is. And, and frankly, when I was kind of looking at these materials and thinking about what would be gained or lost from sticking with the 1996 plan? In a lot of ways, I like the 1996 plan because it is more focused on the aquifer and, and the, the reasons for the UGA being what it is. So I, I'm feeling like when I was trying to weigh, well, what would be lost if it didn't go forward and stuck to the old plan? That's separate from, you know, like I'm from dealing with the, uh, the chapter, like the code revision. I think that contributes something, but I'm not sure that this sub-area plan is going 
in the right direction. There are too many elements like the housing element or another element that I think should have been here is more about the utility planning because if that's a primary purpose of it, it's not here. And there's a really big question in my mind looking at the capital facilities plan. Uh, there's a plan to spend over $7 million in the next, what is it, six years for the capital facilities plan? I think it's $7.5 million or something like that on the water and sewer system for grant. And it looked to me like a lot of that was about expanding, you know, some of it's maintenance and so forth, but a lot of it was about expanding. And I thought, well, wouldn't it be reasonable? I mean, wouldn't it be nice for the folks in the sub area to know what the plan is to make that fair to them in terms of, because most of it's gonna be paid through rates and charges or whatever you call it. It's, it's gonna be paid by people paying the utility. Um, so the people in Grand Man are gonna be expected to pay the seven and a half million dollars. And I feel like there should be more, uh, that should be more central um, to the plan and especially the question should be asked, is this expansion necessary? And why not spend some time looking at how to reduce demand or provide more efficient uh, services? You know, I mean, I, I just feel like there hasn't been a lot of discussion about that. And it's a big part of the plan. In the 1996 plan, it's fundamental to the plan. It's why there's a plan. So those are, those are just some thoughts I might know. So thank you. I'm good. Now. Does anybody else have anything to say in response to that? Oh, I, I can just say that my understanding of the, the plans to just for clarification, because I, I largely agree with most everything you just said. Um, but my understanding is the uh, the plans for expansion um, or, or, or spending on the water and sewer system um, to expand it. Uh, that those plans are um, scalable, that, that it, it can be done in chunks. Um, and so uh, it, it doesn't have to happen all at once, which is good, but, but it does require that we understand what kind of development we expect to see there, what kind of demand that we see so that they know how to schedule that out and, and expand step by step by step. Um, the, the system was originally designed to, to be expandable in, in kind of blocks or chunks, but um, they'll need to know exactly what schedule to, to do that on um, based on what we intend to have in this part of the county. So anyway, it's not an all or nothing. It's not one big bite, but it's by phase in. Based in, yeah. Please. You wrote first. Uh, also, everything additionally said. Um, there are several a couple questions. One is there anything about the disparate impacts to communities of color or minority communities on this plan? And number two, the transportation study mentioned there were some updates um, related to TRPC information. Uh, but I was most struck by the public comment that came in the form of my employee at the Department of Transportation, which was quite detailed about very serious concerns about some of this coming in terms of the current transportation system that were remotely designed for. And I wonder if any changes have been made to this based off of that letter and the concerns raised there. Okay. Uh I do not recall any of the draft plan uh, regarding the variance um, based on population types. Uh, that information, I don't think it's detailed in the population that's been updated. So um, there's no specific reason why that's not on the It wasn't part of the initial. Uh, the PRPC conducted the transportation study and they looked at the population growth uh, projections that they uh, passed for 2020. And so that whole chapter is based on um, that study and their study is available on their website. 
Um, does that answer your question? I'm not sure. No, it's true. Right. So, uh, uh, Department of Transportation's concern is specifically about the urban growth area expansion, yeah. not uh, not so much the reasons for the development in the city uh, to be the city. Uh, it, it they had a lot of concerns over um, the amount of development that would be included in those project sizes as well. Having that large a project be converted to industrial residential. So um, at this time, there was no concern where that would be a hole is if we get to the point where planning commission wants to expand the growth area, then um, most likely have some transportation studies would require as part of the tax statement um, before it gets to the point of town commissioners. Well, y'all know my concern about transportation <laughs> and that I don't think the county sets aside roads where they should be and it allows for um, the uh, right-of-ways that are for the future um, and I'll probably be testifying to that fact in one of the upcoming county commissioner meetings. I think we need to have a policy in the county and I think that's part of what um, Commissioner Passenger is saying too, is we just we just haven't planned for it. And somehow we're gonna to have to plan for those things. Secondly, in general, I'm in favor of plan, both the expansion and the um, uh, the changes within the UGA, and that we have to plan for the future and where some of these commercial centers are gonna be. And there are not a lot of opportunities on the I-5 border and we not even do that. And everybody keeps thinking of the pack as lacy and no water, and we just keep, you know, concentrating, tearing down buildings and build, you know, more bigger, bigger buildings and whatnot. But it really needs to be spread out so people have employment. And I think that the, some of the things that are planned um, from what the local people want to do with their property has an opportunity to create some living wages in, in that area that, that are, are, are needed. So, Generally speaking, I'm favorite. I like a lot of the things that the Commissioner Wheatley said in her letter that we got this afternoon, as far as in the beginning and the history and the, uh, laying some groundwork. We could we could do a better job that way. Generally speaking, I'm the, I'm the thumbs up. We can make some changes. Uh, just a, a, a quick response to Commissioner Wheatley when she was asking about the motivation for a UGA being either for you know an environmental infrastructure impact or because of a growth promotion bank. Um, I don't think it's an either or. I think it's an and. And uh, because of that, I think we can look at it from both directions. That's why I see the need for it down there. But I don't want to discount your concerns on those issues at all because they're there are more than valid. So um, but I, I do think that we can move forward with something down there because the stagnation is going to kill it. But please, please respond. Yeah, what, um, I looked at, you know, what's one part of this where I think planning a revision to a plan like this, um, you know, as a historian, I'm always interested in change over time. You know, that's always a big question for me. And so, uh, you know, that's something that, um, I asked, you know, just this morning, it occurred to me to ask the question, well, you know, we've had this plan since 96. How has growth really happened between Rochester, which views this huge as a relief or a, a, I don't know what you would call it, but, you know, an offset for growth in Rochester. How has Grand Mound really performed as a, as a place to absorb growth? And looking at the um, the CDP data for the two, and also um, the the census data for the for the larger Grand Mount area and the larger Rochester area, and also looking at the buildable lands report. My impression is that 
Rochester has continued to take the growth. Um, the grant map has underperformed. And so there's something going on there, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, having had this plan in place for what, 17 or 15, 16 years, 16 years now, it's not acting the way that one would expect it to act uh, for taking population growth, residential growth. Now, I'm not saying it hasn't been around the commercial area, but in terms of the being a place where growth happens, that hasn't worked. And so if we're going to view it that way, again, I think that's, a, that's grounds for saying we plan and really addressing that. Um, and then uh, in terms of the equity issue, just doing a you know, quick thumbnail trip to the US census and looking at CDPs, because I wasn't going to break it out in the 32 census box of it that the UG it is, but somebody can do that. Um, you know, Rochester, I mean, I just took Hispanic data and Rochester, the Rochester CDP was 12% 10 year, uh, 2010, and it was uh, 11%. So it went down a percent of Hispanic population in those 10 years. Um, Grand went up, it went up from, I think it's a, uh, from 16% Hispanic to 19% Hispanic over that 10 year period. So it's going up. So if you just look at that data alone of change over time, it suggests that there's a concentration going on there of the Hispanic population. If you kind of break that out, think about what that might mean. That's one of the reasons I'm concerned about this whole issue of affordability, housing, importance of that. If you're gonna put in more commercial development of a sort that one would expect along 99, you know, uh, the stuff we're looking at, you know, changing the, the zoning for today, uh, you're, you're not looking at family wage jobs, you're looking at, and that was mentioned by a couple of people at the, at the, uh, at the open house, that those are not the jobs that people want. They're the family wage job. They're not the family wage jobs. They're the jobs that, um, you know, there's a, there's a difference in there for um, women in Grand Mount. There are more men in Rochester. Grand Mount is younger. Rochester is older. I sent out that data to you all a while ago. Um, so there's a growing difference. And the more, you know, if you want to turn this into a kind of a concentration area, there's going to be more and more disparity uh, between the two areas. And that's something that needs to be addressed. I mean, it needs to be addressed in terms of making sure that it remains affordable. And that's why I've been really pushing on that because um, if you're going to say that you want to have a lot of commercial growth right there, and you're gonna want that, you're gonna want people to be working in that, they need to be able to afford to live there or you're gonna be taking people from even farther out and have them come in and work at the burger joint or whatever. So they're, they're related. I, I just have a comment on the family wage job thing because I had lunch with uh, Richard DeBolt, the head of the Economic Development Alliance of Lewis County on Friday, and he was talking about uh, warehousing distribution jobs and uh, what it has done to the Australia area. Um, and the example he gave was the UNFI warehouse, very big uh, warehouse distribution um, center on the north, north end of Centralia. Um, that UNFI closed two large distribution centers further north and, and one further south to, to combine the two uh, in the Centralia area. And he said that the only employees of that facility are the management. Everyone else is on contract. And most of those contractors come in from Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, live in hotels for the length of their contract, send the money out of state and get paid minimum wage. So we just need to be very clear if we're talking about warehouse distribution, unless it's a Costco that, that treats their employees differently and hires employees. But if we're just building warehouses without knowing who it is that is going to, to be the tenant of that facility, we're not talking about family wage jobs. We're possibly not even talking about jobs for people that live in Thurston County. So that, and, and he, uh, 
he indicated that that their experience with warehousing distribution centers in Lewis County is that uh, they're not they're not looking for any more. That that is not the kind of jobs that they want to create uh, in their community. Um, some will be built. He, he he understands that, but that is not the type of uh, economic development that they want to see in Lewis County. Go ahead, Kevin. Uh, I appreciate that data, Richard. What a source. Um, but I hey, have a very large concern that I'm surprised we're not talking more about, which is the agricultural element, the saving of farmland. Um, I, I can't remotely understand why we're in favor of something when all of us have said that we want to retain farmland in the county, that we have no idea how we're possibly going to do that, that we know we're losing the farmland, specifically in places like this development contemplated uh, rich road, and that we know that that's a lot of farmland. It's like they're going to turn into housing development, and that there's nothing we can do about it at this point. So we don't know where we're using it, we don't know where we possibly need it. And yet, we've been told we do not have for additional warehouse space for building houses, and we're talking about converting some farmland into space that can be used for warehouses. Are, are you specifically talking about down on the Duskin and Jackson proposals, or are you talking overall? Maybe I'm wrong, but I thought the only farmland that was even in consideration here of changing was Duskin and Jackson, and the rest of this proposal isn't farmland. Kowalski was, but the family hasn't farmed it forever, and they're yeah, they're retired they're and sell their land. It couldn't be farmland. Wow. It'd be interesting to know if it was uh, taxed as agricultural land. I guess that would be. I, I think we knew that at one time, didn't we? I'm not sure, but uh, but you were talking there outside of whatever Nothing inside the UGA currently is agricultural. Go ahead, Michelle. Oh, I thought you had something else going on. Everyone always up for talking. No, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, and you know, I'm not sure where that leads us. I, I think that, that there's obviously a contingent that is dissatisfied with its current form and another contingent that is ready to move forward with some of this. Uh, right. So, uh, you know, we have four work sessions. Uh, our discussions have brought up concerns, but there haven't been many requests from the planning commission to make specific changes. Uh, as a whole, so uh, at this time, we could either, we could do um, a vote to see if there is a majority to recommend approval, or if, uh, there could be a suggestion to recommend approval with specific changes. Uh, we can't do overarching if we do a study and provide that information. But um, we had texts that by the planning commission. Uh, yeah, or you could not at all. Go ahead, Commissioner Whitley. Yeah, I have kind of a third alternative. Um, and, and I I just I mean I I say every practically every meeting I've been pushing on the housing issue, uh, the housing element issues. So um and, and another thing, I mean, just as an aside, you know, I you know, I've been on here for almost a year now, and I guess I would have to say I still don't understand process because I in a sense I wasn't aware that we could simply say uh, I want this changed like that. I mean I, I think sort of maybe too deferential and sort of saying well, can we so we do that. But if what you know it maybe this is an educational thing for me, but if 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 I'm supposed to go in and wholesale, you know, say this is not right, you know, make it like that or I want this. I didn't know, honestly, that that was part of the process. So um, just that's a, sort of a little aside on this. But, but for my third alternative, and I raised this earlier, I think we need some clarification. Maybe it can only come from the Board of County Commissioners um, regarding the ultimate purpose of this UGA. I mean, I would like, I don't know if it's possible because, again, I'm a relative maybe just a year old here, but um, can we now sit 
back to the commission and ask them some questions for clarification. Uh, and then bring it back on the docket next time because I really, really want to know whether uh, the county commissioners are thinking about uh, Grand Band as uh, mainly a place that needs protection of the aquifer uh, and some degree of accommodation, but not really as you know as as a UTA from Olympia like you know you guys want to be but because it's still very rural in Grand I mean it's I mean it's still yeah and do they really want four to sixteen you know four sixteen um zoning or do they are are they willing to go for the way that the residents of the UGA seem to be saying that they want to you know, their ruralness or their rural character or however you want to put it. So that to me is a very big question. I feel like I don't fully have an answer to. And can we bounce it back before we go on? I can clarify some of that. Okay. Uh, I did provide a link uh, to the Department of Commerce uh, document that uh, provides some guidance on growth and economic for rural areas. Uh, the original Establishment of that area starting to develop was based on water and sewer plants. Uh, but there was a point where the Growth Management Act went in um, and designated areas of urban development. And so, in most cases, that is areas associated with the state where land would be annexed in the future to accommodate future growth. There are some areas in the state that are just urban growth areas. So, they are. Uh, the, the intention is that one day that will be the state. It is determined by the Growth Management Act that that is an area of urban development that um, needs to meet population growth um, and while at the same time balance protection of the environment, the aquifer, and everything else. Um, and part of that is directing it away from the sprawl in the water uh, and the corporate area. So uh, we can't. Just remove specific uh, designations. We can't prevent population growth from happening there. Uh, so I, I think it was at the last meeting where requirements for a comprehensive plan were brought up, and part of that was uh, looking at housing uh, for different uh, income levels. And interpretation of that law from Department of Commerce is uh, largely related to what we can do as a county, which is zoning, and that is providing a range of zoning options that can accommodate a range of different types of housing options, like how we have RR5 in the whole county and medium high density residential in the UVAs. Um, development has to go through beyond our zoning. Uh, I, I don't, for that intention, for the intention of the urban growth area, that's not really an answer that the board can give us because that is determined by the growth management. I, I, I would do want to say too that when the planning commission has asked the board for direction before we've actually gotten conflicting answers. Sometimes we've got answers of, well, that's your job to find the facts and figure it out and then to advise us. And then there's other times where they've come back and said, we specifically want this and we'd like it reflected in your recommendations. So <clears throat> they haven't explicitly said it like that, but we have gotten a letter before um, saying, well, we got one letter that said, don't look at us for answers. You make well, your, like you make your recommendations. Recommendation. <laughs> yeah, you make your recommendations to us, and then we we will consider them and don't try to anticipate what we think or what we're going to decide. So that was on that was SMP, wasn't it? That yeah. we have that letter. Yeah. So asking the board for explicit instructions might not happen. I can see that, but I I think Helen's got a really good point because I think if the if we knew that the board was wanted us to treat it one way or another, mm -hmm. that would change the way that we approached it. So if the board's basically said that you know we want to basically keep this for the intended purpose, and it was so you know we can provide municipal services and protect the aquifer, and that's all we want it for. That's a different answer than you know we see a future of growth here. Um, that I think could be really 
helpful to clarify. It would change the way that that I look at some of this. Go ahead, Commissioner. We believe you had more. Well, yeah, I mean, just in terms of I I quibble a little bit with this concept that a UGA, you know, creating a UGA necessarily means that it must be about growth, because if you look at the RCW on UGAs, 3670 A110, paragraph four, I'll just read it and you can interpret it how you like. I interpret it my way. You can interpret it how you want to, but it says, in general, cities are the units of local government most appropriate to provide urban governmental services. In general, it is not appropriate that urban governmental services be extended to or expanded in rural areas, except in those limited circumstances shown to be necessary to protect basic public health and safety and the environment and when such services are financially supportable at rural densities and do not permit urban development. So it seems like this plan kind of falls somewhere in the middle of that, and it's part of the confusion, right? Because I think it initially passed, it got the okay as a non-city UGA because it was dealing with the aquifer issue. And then it kind of morphed into this growth thing. And part of my concern between the 96 and the 2022 20, plan was this kind of, I don't know if you call it mission creep or whatever, but you know, I saw that I was very concerned that the aquifer had kind of fallen out of the discussion. And that then we were talking about this growth imperative because I don't read that as saying that there's an imperative that a, a UGA take growth if it's created for other reasons. I, I don't want to sound quick here, but I mean, the middle word in UTA is growth. Right, but this is the Growth Management Act. It's part of the Growth Management Act. It's a tool. Yeah. So, and I, I think the, the other example would be, you know, let's let's say that we the the county wanted to extend sewer services out along, you know, one of the 99 or something. Well, or out along a shoreline area. So can you get everybody off subject and on to Onto services, like we wouldn't then think that just because you know that got built into the UGA, we moved municipal services out there, that that meant we now did high density, you know, and commercial. So I, in those areas, so I, that's one of the ways I see it. And then I think one complicating factor for me here is the development um, that's driven by the truck, because that creates a different set of circumstances here. And it's growth that is happening, and maybe it's better to treat this like an area where it's going to grow. Maybe it's already started to, and it's the responsible thing to treat it as a place that's going to grow for reasons other than just protecting the. And it's the intersection of so the highways. Just really quick, um, I just want to clarify that if we're just talking about the purpose of the plan and the language that you provided, that's totally fine. If we're not, we don't need to outline exactly what we want to plan, like if we want to plan the environment, we want to say that there's a focus in this urban growth area on the environment and how we're that's fine. Uh, you can make that information. Um, I would just say that obviously they, when this was done, they intended it for growth because they have rural three to, or three to six and four to 16 housing. That is not rural housing, so. I mean, by that very mission, it wasn't just, I think what they did was they said, we've got this area that's growing. If we put this septic and water, or the sewer water system in, we can do more to protect the aquifer. And I think that was part of it, but I think it's also about growth because clearly, like I said, four to 16 is not rural. And it, I mean, you might, I don't even know. You couldn't put that on septic. Yeah. And also, is it just a smart place to put the growth because you have the services? Mm -hmm. I, I think I, I, I'm, t I'm agreeing with a lot of this stuff that I'm hearing. But I, I, in order to back to the commissioners, I think it's sure in our duty. I think we're put here to plan and get a, some kind of responsible, res 
reply to to what we're we're thinking and and it seems like we need to be somewhere in the middle of what we're all talking about here we want to have some responsible growth that puts into account the the aquifers and the water because of the people down there definitely they they like the rural living no doubt about that but i believe it's our duty to send the commissioners something whatever that looks like when we get there that's what we put here in these seats to do it's, and they've sent us the docket. They've they've asked us to review this. So it's my opinion that we need to review it, what, however it looks at the end, and that's what we send back to them. And if you know, then they can say, "No, this this you know, you guys need to do this over again or whatever." But I mean, if we go back and forth with them every time we're trying to clarify something, I don't know if that's what we're supposed to be doing. It's we're not taking what they want us. Oh, let me back that up. We're filtering through what the public wants, what we believe is the best for them, what we can do to serve the county in the best way. And uh, I guess my thinking is we, I, I'm not 100% on with this, but it's our responsibility to send the board something that is workable, that, that, that we feel is workable, and let them kind of go over it again. They're going to go through the whole process again in the county and, and you know or if they don't like it they can always send it back is my opinion so all right well um i guess we're moving forward with this plan and we're going to fight over the details a little bit which is probably the way we should yeah. have it. so and, and, you know i'm sorry it was like when we're having this conversation about affordable housing sewer and it, bring the solution bring the solution what do you think is the solution? Let us do that. I mean, we're talking about it, but I don't, I'm, and I don't know what that is, you know, what the solution is, but bring that a part of the, let's just start making that the part of the conversation instead of we just need this and this and this. Well, how do we accomplish that? How do we fund it? What do we, what do we need to do to get there? So that's my other thing. All right. Well, I would argue that the two best ways to get to affordable housing are by number one, which we have some control over is zoning mm -hmm. and making it yeah. easy enough for people to build in high enough density. And number two, which we don't have control of is county fees. We might be able to have some impact on that when we go through the comp plan. Mm -hmm. In a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, do we want to go through some of these individual proposals then? Okay. Uh, we can do a quick thumbs up, thumbs down if we were to recommend, uh, sorry, recommend adoption of the plan. Just All right, we're on a negative. We're on to go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Six, six notes. Yeah. So, and then my next question, yeah, would be, um, so I think uh, Helen's at least our like primary, or you know, she's the first, the leader of the holdouts. Um, do we think we're in a place where we could get, we could take what we have now? and make suggestions that would be sufficient to, to move it forward. I, I, I guess where you're kind of going with this is you're kind of leading the charge on this because you've obviously done the most work on it for sure. <laughs> and so as the majority leader on this particular vote, you get to write the recommendation if you like. And your recommendation could be an alternative to what was proposed. That's a big job. But well, I mean, I would say I don't think we're there yet. I mean, I, okay. To me, we need to go through each individual piece and see where we're at. So because I, my thumbs down was I'm not okay with just a blanket adoption of what has been approved. approved, approved what has been proposed. Mm -hmm. So you want to you want to go through each of the individual proposals outside of the whole plan and then take a vote on that. I, I'm 
Yeah, I'm specifically talking about the subarea plan draft. So just to clarify, are you just talking about you want to go through the rest of it before looking back at this, or is there something that the planning commission suggests at this time to change specifically to get to the point where we can recommend approval? And to clarify, we're talking about the subarea plan specifically, not the is that inclusive of all of the other options? Yes, just, just, the, the just the draft plan. Okay. And it sounds like Helen, you're in a place where you'd be willing to move forward with a sub area plan with specific changes. Um, yeah, except I think it needs more work in terms of um, the the um, some of the research. I mean, it, it would be. I, I mean, I, I think it's not just changing the language or something. It's more information. Yes, that. I think, yeah, I think it can be um, something put forward, but I don't think it's going to happen this year. <laughs> I, guess. I mean, I don't see it happening by um, you know, the end of the summer um, because there are some, some things that really need um, some real work, I guess, before it's. And, and the thing is, I guess part of what I'm thinking about is like with the transportation. It's in a sense it's going to go forward anyway because the the TRPC is working out. I mean, there this stuff is like so built into the budget in so many ways. You know, it's, you know, so so a lot of the, you know a lot of the uh, roles and actions in here are around transportation, and I I'm not that as concerned about them. I mean, they were very much uh, seemed to be approved of in the public meetings and so forth. And you know, people are eager to see some improvements. Some transportation improvements for sure. Um, and it didn't seem like any of those were sources of conflict, particularly. Yeah, so there's definitely elements of it that could go forward. And I don't know, I guess I'm not experienced enough to know I can it be a kind of and, and because it's like a this kind of day, uh, you know, maybe it can only focus, it, it can focus on certain areas or something and not be as comprehensive a sub area plan as you would expect if it were, say, for the, you know, city of Olympia or something like that. I mean, I, I just, I guess I'm throwing up my hands and saying, I don't know. There's a lot to work with here that can be worked with for sure. Yeah. And then there's some stuff. And, and another, just another element that I think really needs to be looked at based on the, on, on the, public stuff is, I mean, there was so much interest in public parks and open space and green space. And that's another one that we just, you know, that came forward as a really strong issue for people. And it's not here. Trails. Trails and parks, but also neighborhood parks. And, and then I, it's particularly, I mean, I'm kind of worried about this one, our discussion about the rezoning, because there was particular discussion about um, the, um, um, steel hammer property. You know, you look at it and they were saying that it's a great park, and you look at it and you say it sure would. And then there were like these connections to history. And I was looking at the history element, and the history element's not developed. And so, you know, there are some real questions about, you know, how all these things inter interrelate. Like, um, so, yeah. So, but I, I, I think it's worth continuing to work. And, and that it could be an improvement over the 1996. We're not there yet. And we won't be by the end of the month. Is that an answer? I kind of got lost. <laughs> so, you want to get direction? Yeah. So, um, I'm a little, I want to make sure that the planning commission understands that the summary plan, we want to make sure that the summary plan isn't redundant to our comprehensive plan because they both yeah. work in tandem. So, we have housing information in our comprehensive plan. So what we're asking as, sorry, they're talking back your head. <laughs> what we're asking of the planning commission is, it's over these last several meetings, is, is there something specific that you are not seeing that we don't have in our comp plan yeah. that we aren't, we, that we can do in the time frame and within the scope that we've been provided by board of county commissioners, which is to bring this into today's world, not thank you six world um a long time ago uh, and so what would that be specifically 
that you want to be seen in that plan that, like I said, is not redundant to what we already have in our housing chapter in the comprehensive plan. This comprehensive plan goal has been pulled up. Now, the first goal of the housing chapter is enough housing should be available to meet the housing needs of the existing and projected populations of the county in this area with the Grand Mount area, including rentals and purchase of opportunities for all income levels. And then there's a whole bunch of policies that fall underneath that. Um, yeah, there's two, three, three, three goals. So I can, I'll read them all without taking up too much time. Promote safe and decent housing diversity that meets the changing population needs that are in close proximity to jobs, transit, and daily activities. That's goal two. And again, there's objectives and policies within um, that goal. And then to preserve and maintain affordable housing, enhance quality standard housing, and to provide decent and affordable housing in Thurston County. So those are the three goals that we currently have in our comprehensive plan. So what would the planning commission as a whole like to see in addition to those goals in the Southern plan that is specific to Grand Mound and not the um, county as a whole, understanding that comprehensive plan will go through an update here, um, the 10 year update, and we will be looking at a specific, more specific affordable housing piece and um, virtual include, inclusion and equity piece, which is an extremely complicated and very labor intensive look that the um, commerce has finally provided some um, guidance on. So that cannot happen in this grand mound subarea plan, but will occur and then a blanket covered in the subarea plan. So we're looking for those specifics. That's what we've been asking for at this time. We don't want to be redundant because there's something specific to this particular area. Angel. I would say even without looking at the, the actions and or yes. if those are the goals, whatever is behind them is insufficient because we're failing at that. And so if we're going to have this plan go into effect or update it and have that go into effect, and then there's some lag time before we address the housing element of the comprehensive plan, um, I'm not comfortable pointing at the comprehensive plan and saying that took care of it because clearly the facts are right now that it hasn't it hasn't worked so you don't think this would be one step forward well if, if if what she's saying is that we don't need to spell it out in in the UGA update uh, because it's covered in the comprehensive plan I would say well whatever's in the comprehensive plan isn't good enough and so I'm not comfortable having that be the answer for two years until we can get to it. How's, how's it not working in your opinion? Do we have, look, read the goals again? Tell me if you think we've accomplished them. I would say we failed on all of them. Just looking at the, the situation in our county right now, we don't have housing for people of all income levels. We don't have sufficient, uh, I mean, read them off again. Give me a thumbs up and down. Are we, are we, are we, Doing this or not? I don't think it's the goals fault. No, it's not the no, goals fault. No, but right. but I'm just saying those goals are have not been accomplished. That's not the reality that I see when I drive around this county. Well, we do need to kind of focus on the Grand Mountain area specifically and what we can do there. And if and one of the goals is this housing element, and we have before us a proposal to bring in some parcels that are going to be cut up for high density housing. Well, that's a step forward in the right direction. And I don't know if waiting for a couple of years until we do a full comp plan update and then go back to Grand Mound, I don't think that's serving that community at all because they won't see any benefits of it for five years. Where if we start doing this now, they can start seeing benefits in 2023. Go ahead. Well, unfortunately, it's not a straight line building houses being affordable, and, and I, I, I've said this at a couple of meetings already, one of the concerns I have about Grand Mount is displacement. I mean, uh, it's great, it's, well, and, and that was something that there was some language in here that I wanted to change in the, in the code changes, because, mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, the Department of Commerce will back me up on this, you know, it's a big part of what they're talking about now, it's a big focus up north of us. 
is that it's not enough to build housing. You have to think about who you're displacing. You have to think about how rising land prices push people out. People are in Grant now. They're in Rochester. It's one of the poorer parts of the county as it is in terms of income, not necessarily in terms of quality of life. You know, there are other elements of quality of life than just money. And, um, and so I think, especially when you think of it through the lens of sustainable Thurston and a decision that was made, you know, Thurston County is not Lewis County. Lewis County develops along the I-5 corridor because that's its kind of heart for development. Thurston County made this different decision. It made a decision to essentially concentrate the population in the north part of the county and protect farmland and rural life in the south part of the county. And, and so it's different. Like, you know, you don't just move naturally to you cross that border from Lewis County to Thurston County and you kind of enter a different universe um, because South Thurston County is not the same as North Lewis County in certain ways. So, so you know, we're supposed to be as planning holistically about this. And um, so, so it's not just the comprehensive plan. We're supposed to be thinking about uh, adaptable, the, the climate adaptation plan. We're supposed to be thinking about the climate mitigation plan. We're supposed to be thinking about sustainable Thurston. We're supposed to be thinking big picture about what's the relationship between South County and North County? Who lives in these places? What do they do with their quality of life? Quality of life is part of the Growth Management Act. It's, it's in there. You're supposed to be thinking about that. Um, and so it, it's just, if you, take, if you take people who are saying they like the rural nature of Grandman, whatever that means to them, I mean, it may not literally be true, but I think part of what they're saying is they like being able to live fairly cheap on the land um, and do kind of on the land stuff, right? Um, so if you bring in um, high density housing, it's not necessarily going to help those people. It may raise the price of the land, it may push them out. And you need, that's part of the equity lens that the Department of Congress instructions are about is that when you think about intensifying land use, you have to think about the potential for displacement of the existing population. And so your position is you believe that adding housing down there will actually make it more difficult for lower income families. I think you cannot assume a straight line between building housing and the housing being affordable. And I think so, I mean, it, it is essentially this really you know, complex like, formula for like how you actually do this um, or how you make sure that you have affordable housing. Part of it is absolutely making sure there is available housing stock. Um, but if you add housing stock, like one of the one of the things you have to be cognizant of is the, the possibility that, that that changes the character, changes how much land is worth, it changes who can afford to live there. Um, it's a classic gentrification story. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what it keeps, this conversation keeps highlighting to me is that if we wanna make choices about you know, increasing densities, increasing, you know, possibly increasing the, the value of land in Grand Mound, we need to have a really robust sub area plan that can help mitigate some of the downsides of doing that. If it's done, it should be done carefully. Go ahead, Kevin. Uh, even though I'm way up here, I'm way up here, I have a lot of friends that live in that area. And I've been meeting with the school board there, superintendent there, and talked to them about some of these issues. And they're freaking out right now. They don't have the funding to support their students that they need. They don't have the funding to support the school system requirements that they have. They're overwhelmed with growth um, and they want to know how they can plan for it. But do you know what they're really freaking out about right now in that area that neighborhood cares about more than anything right now? The fire. 
fire stations. They just lost two huge fire stations. And the, the vote only missed by half a percent, but it's killing the community because people are now about to find out that the property taxes are getting, I mean, their, their property insurance rates are going. And it's going to be a lot more than what it would have cost if they just had to pay for the fire service. So they're also incredibly concerned about the development plans of the tribe and whether any of their plans coincide. Can be possibly important. It's a real concern. Go ahead, Caitlin. I think we maybe need to go back to this. Would you be able to move on to talking about some of the parts? Yeah. Yes, we, we should. Let's move on to some of these other individual proposals then. Okay. Um, we're going to touch on the code uh, draft first. Uh, my change slides. One more. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Uh, original draft code uh, that you were provided to X State in 1996 development code uh, that was left back of the subarea plan and moves it to the Thurston County Code. Uh, it also included a reduction to lot widths in the R3 and R4 residential zones and removes references to the Grand Island Subarea Plan development guidelines and other things. Uh, the only specific changes that have been requested so far are from the Works department. Um, so those changes have been made in the most recent draft uh, that you've received to clarify um, consistency with road standards and other requirements. Uh, slide. Oh. Uh, from what we've discussed with the code, draft code, uh, how does everybody feel about adopting that as drafted? I guess my question is because uh, I don't remember what did we come to agreement on on lot widths. I thought we decided that lot widths should be like what is elsewhere in the county. I don't. I, I know we talked about completely removing that, and I guess I think I was, I was kind of leaning that way, and that my concern was having them wide enough. So if you had a, like if you had a lot that was five acres, make sure that there. If it's some odd shape, make sure it's wide enough that if someday you get changed to a higher density, you could. May still have room for road in there, but that wasn't covered by the flag lot ordinance. I don't remember. I thought that was covered by the flag lot. I it was too. You want to well, I don't know what specifically, but right? um, we did discuss that where lot widths would have to, like, if they're going to develop it, they, they would have to still meet road standards of that width. Um, and so. Like there are codes in Thurston County Code that dictate how wide, so like a flag lot must be specifically to allow access. So Thurston County wouldn't allow something. No, they wouldn't allow a four foot wide lot. I, I believe there's also a, a flag lot that I'm along with. Yeah, so it's still. So there would, after a site plan review, it shouldn't be approved anyway. If it cannot fit like fit access into it for like emergency reasons, especially. Um, so we didn't get a full board recommendation for the lot widths. Um, there was a lot of discussion, it was great, but I didn't get a the planning commission wants you to change it. The planning commission suggests you do this. So what we have right now is just the draft that was provided. So if, if you guys have as a whole. A board. I'm not getting process. myself confused. What's the draft say? So, with the minimum lot widths for R3 to 6 and R4 to 16, just within the downtown area, it, well, it's, it's a little long, so I'm going to throw some work salad at you. Um, so, like interior lots would go from 75 feet to 50 feet, which is keeping in with some of the other UGs. 
as all of these. The corner lot would go from 100 feet minimum to 50 feet minimum. The waterfront lot in this draft would just be four mount um, because we didn't really have a good definition of what would be considered waterfront. And there weren't enough lots that were maybe kind of next to the creek to really necessitate that own category and said it would go under an interior lot or a corner lot or a cul-de-sac lot. So that one, then we've got cul-de-sac would stay at 35 feet, flag lot would stay at a minimum of 20 feet, and then cluster subdivisions, interior lot would stay at 20 feet, but the corner lot would go from 50 to 30 feet because there was quite a bit of difference between an interior lot and the same cul-de-sac having less than half of what a corner lot would be. The non-residential uses within that residential three to six, an interior lot would go from 150 feet minimum, corner lot would go from 125 feet minimum to 50 feet. And then in the four to 16 zone, an interior lot in a conventional subdivision would go from 60 to 40 feet minimum. They, they can have a 60 foot width lot if they want to. Uh, the corner lot would go from an 85 foot minimum to 40 feet. The cul-de-sac would go from 35 feet to 35 feet, so that one would stay the same. Flag lot, stay the same at 20 feet. Cluster subdivision, interior lot would stay the same at 20 feet. Um, 20 feet was kind of one of the smaller ends that I ever saw, so I, I didn't go below what I saw as a standard low in the others. The corner lot of a cluster subdivision would go from 10 feet to 30 feet minimum. And non-residential uses within the four to 16 zone would go interior lot 100 to 50 feet, corner lot 125 to 50 feet. So they largely reflect what up is elsewhere in the county. Yes, elsewhere in the county of areas that have similar zone densities are mm -hmm. UGAs. So I wasn't looking at the places that had totally different zones. Um, and totally different densities. So obviously, the minimum lot would tie us directly into the density, so it would not be cohesive if I looked at others. And this would not change what density is allowed for settlement. Yeah. Uh, the, just as a reminder, the reason that we are changing this is because it was reported that applicants were not able to meet what they were allowed to have for density because these were the yeah. factor. Go ahead. Well, yeah, that was a, there was a question. Can they go in the four to 16? I'm not sure. I think we talked about it. I think we did. I thought the answer was yes. Yeah, I think yeah. it was, yes. Yeah. And, and then I had a, a you know, I backed up, because I remember we had a discussion about the water plant front. We kind of went back and forth. and. Um, you know, like you said, it's basically Prairie Creek. Mm -hmm. And you just said, you know, it's not very many properties, but I'm just wondering, because I thought that it was a long time ago. I thought that was enough. I mean, it didn't really come out before it but I was going to say, you know, for tonight, that was one of the few, you know, I only have a couple of things, but that was one of them. Is I'd really like to see that retained, I guess, because I like the, I mean, I, I don't know if these are necessarily critical areas or, or not. So I don't know if they're protected by critical areas ordinance. So I'm wondering if 60 feet would, I mean, if it's relatively few, that's okay. But, you know, why not just retain that waterfront lot? You know, like take So one thing it. we would want to define it then, too. Okay. Um, and then these aren't in the SMP. So they're not within the shoreline management. Um, they're right outside. They're not within it. Why, why is that? Because they're class. The creek itself does not meet the requirements to be part of, to be classified as the um, shoreline that meets the SMP requirements. So, oh, well, that seems like a reason to keep the like, It does still have the critical area requirements, which would be property is managed as their shoreline back. They wouldn't. There's a possibility the critical area buffer is larger than what our lot of it. Any environmental regulations that would apply would still apply. Yeah. That being said, though, if you want to make that recommendation, that change, you can do that. Yeah. 
her on that for more experience. And yeah, I, I would be would looking say, for I mean, an entire. I would say Lotwith doesn't have a lot to do with the areas because, and it could happen. I, mean, yeah, I don't think this is going to happen there, but it could be an issue where if you have to have too wide of a lot width, then maybe you have to change something because you're getting, you're trying to get around that critical area and build something. Whereas if you, the more you narrow that down, more options you have on that piece of property. So that, that was the other part of this. We did talk about the fact that um, this uh, minimum lot width is actually smaller than all the others because it was intended to make it easier to develop around the area. So, um, so that would also be something that we need to consider. I'm already. With the proposed changes? Yeah, okay. Proposed. We have a couple. Okay. Um, we'll just, we can maybe do a thumbs up, thumbs down. Oh, um, are you still on lot? Well, just real, no, not not lot with. There's a couple of little things. Okay, let's finish up lot with. Is everybody on board with the proposal for lot with? Yeah. Okay. Is that a yes or no? Yeah. Hey, did you want to go through these in a particular order? For the land use? Yeah, so I, I want to make sure that we hit Commissioner Wheatley's stuff, but if you're wanting to go in order, we'll just make sure we pick her up on that end, or we could defer to her now, whichever way you want to go. Uh, yeah, let me go through them really quick. It's just the. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. So, uh, slide. One more slide. Okay. So we have uh, five land use and zoning amendment requests that uh, do not uh, involve an expansion to the UTA slide. Uh, for zoning changes in general, consideration should include goals of the subarea plan, comprehensive plan policy, countywide planning policies, uh, and public comment. Slide. Oh, sorry. Yep, there you go. Um, for zoning changes to properties with a rural designation, uh, this policy from the comprehensive plan is also applicable. Um, this will apply to the Jackson Nissen property as well as all three of the properties requesting an expansion to the UGA, since all four properties are located outside the UGA and thus considered rural. Slide. Uh, Steel Hammer Family Express property requesting a rezoning to our Imperial Commercial and is currently undeveloped. Slide. The old fire station is developed and requesting a rezone to Archdale Purple. Slide. The Morgan property is undeveloped and requesting a rezone to Archdale Purple. Slide. Uh, the Tribal Trust Lands is developed with the Great Falls Lodge and is proposed to rezone to Archdale Commercial. Slide. The Jackson property is located outside of the UGA but not requesting an expansion. Uh, the applicant is requesting a rezone. Rural resource industrial and may not be meeting the comprehensive plan policies or rezones of rural properties. Slide. Uh, so, this is the ground level that was provided to the best cabinet in the northeast materials that show um, previous properties. Um, yeah. What, um, what concerns the question? Go ahead, please. Jackson, same property. Seem to look at a fair bit of public comment. Uh, a fundamental question about that if it's outside the EPA, uh, is it outside the sub area? Like, is it outside the sub area plan currently? Um, technically, yes, but and, and it's, it's not a request for expansion. So, in a way, where all of this is, or should we be considering this? Um, this particular property because it's not in the sub area and it's not a request for an expansion. And there seem to be questions that maybe need to be answered, um, you know, sort of with the uh, county policy more than the sub area on this, on this property. So can, can we pull it out and consider it separately or and maybe just not consider it a suggestion because it's not really part of the sub area? I think now is the better time to talk about it since it's pretty jinxed. It could have asked for a lot of different things. So I think that us taking some sort of action on it would be appropriate. Would 
would we be recommending also? I mean, a UGA expansion to do that? Did we just have some mm -hmm. little no, hanging out there outside of the resort? Standard resort. Just a standard outside of the UGA. So, okay. I mean, it's, it was included in this um, because it is adjacent. Uh, and the sub area plan, while it focuses on parking in the sub area and in the UGA, it does still relate to properties in the surrounding area. Um, and so, you know, if you want to look at rezoning all the other properties, we're also considering comprehensive policies. Uh, this one just has a rural policy that applies to it. Um, so I, I do think it would be appropriate to consider here, but if you want to, uh, if you want, if you want to recommend not, uh, rezoning it because of the um, fact that it is rural or because it is, um, if, it, if it's an intense use, it is a uh, you know, industrial use adjacent to the urban health area, you can recommend whichever. You could not include it in that. Uh, do you have someone that ended or catch it? Mm -hmm. I mean, the board and county commissioner. It's part of the board board county. County. They get all these requests, you know, so group them together and as they want to group together. So, I mean, that's why it's here is because they want us to act on it. So, are, are you looking for mainly a thumbs up, thumbs down to include it? Well, so uh, what we can do is we can either do thumbs up, thumbs down as a whole, or I think we should probably do these one at a time yeah. um, okay. if we can burn through these. Yeah. Um, so do we want to um, feel? I, I, I think that if we at least got a feel, if we, yeah, if we did it right now, we at least know if we're close or if we're, you know, maybe we're in agreement on everything already. Okay. Go ahead. Can you go to slide 13 for a second? I mentioned this the last time we had this discussion. Item C, these are the three things that we need to rezoning and this should only occur when these three things. Item C, the reason for maintaining the enhanced environmental quality. And I'm just curious because I see other information here relative to as it developed, as it developed, is it in the plan or so very comprehensive for public comment sake? But I don't see anything on here for each of these five elements. Uh, it does it maintain or enhance environmental quality? And I have to guess multiple separate environmental qualities, um, but I'd like to know your analysis of that. I don't think so. We can certainly consider it shoot it down too. Well, just just to get a thumbnail on Jackson and seeing how are people feeling about a the reason. Oh, that's Is that is that all thumbs down? Okay. That's unanimous. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. What's the next one, Caitlin? Uh, let's go to Steel Hammer. Okay. Which one? Steel Hammer. Uh, first. I'm sorry, Kate, you cut out which slide? Uh, Steel Hammer. Um, so that would be 14. I have one question about some of these. We have a couple where there are proposals to move from um, residential to commercial. Mm -hmm. um, what are options for like mixed use zoning in some of these? Uh, well, we so the Ontario Commission zone does still allow uh, 
um, I think family doesn't have the same density as R4. Um, Perfect. That yeah. answers my question. Please. I guess my, you know, I listened to the, uh, you know, looked at the con public comment and on the steel hammer one, I guess this is one of those ones where I feel like if we had an open space and recreation plan, it would be easier to have an opinion about this because um, it seems like uh, I don't know where, you know, other than a couple of discussions about trails. I don't know where um, putting in parks and creating character for through those parks is being considered in the current proposed plan. And the public comment made sense to me that this is an area that might be considered for that. Um, so how does the how does the zoning uh, so we we do actually have a parks trails and recreation plan for the county. Uh, it's handled under the public works department, uh, and it is uh, currently in the process of being updated. Uh, and I know that it is looking at a couple of locations in Grand Mountain for trails. Um, unfortunately, it's one of those processes that is separated from this. Um, there are also a lot of uh, legal issues with uh, requiring property owners to provide trails and parks. Uh, so that's not something I'm going to consider in this proposal. Go ahead, Doug. But, but, but if the if taxpayers wanted to buy the steel highway property, even though it's been reclassified, we could make it a park. Uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? In other words, if the, the homeowner sells the property to the county, the county can make a park out of it. Sure. But to require the people to make a park out of a piece of property that's very valuable, that's right across the street from commercial, you know, is ludicrous as far as I'm concerned. Probably an unconstitutional example. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, we, we cannot condition the use of the property to certain reasons. We have to look at the range of what is allowed on this property. So if they say they want to provide a park on this property for a purely on commercial uh, and we rezone it, they could turn around and put whatever problem, whatever land use they would like that is allowed in that zone. Um, so that, yeah. that's, what's, that's what's tough about not having a subject plan, you know, while you're considering this rezone because I would like a more robust development historic and archaeological element. Um, I'd like a survey of what the elements are within the grant in terms of historic and archaeological resources. Then I would like a, a more robust discussion of a recreational area plan, an open space plan for the sub area, so that I would know, you know, if this got rezoned and turned into a arterial commercial business spot, um, you know, is this a potential lost opportunity for purchasing the land and creating a park or creating a stormwater park, for example, which is, um, you know, the, this is another element that hasn't really been discussed in the, in the set area plan is when you're increasing density and population, you're getting more stormwater. Uh, especially, especially in this area, as it's more developed, you know, do we want to have a stormwater park somewhere, you know, where we're concentrating the drainage in a in a way that also creates a place, a place. So you know, these kinds of ideas to play with, um, which I'm feeling like we have more potential to play with them if it stays zoned as it is than if we turn it into arterial right. commercial. So I'm a thumbs down on that. The, I mean, we've talked a lot about um, low cost housing and the ability of people to afford housing. We can't talk about that and then also say we need to, we need to increase our taxes and we need to increase the cost of property because there's no property to build on. And I mean, it, you can't have both. And the problem is this county tries to have both. And so we end, we end up with 
failed goal because we try to do two counterproductive things we like to do. I'm not saying they're bad ideas. I'm just saying that you can't have the two together and, and have cost housing, affordable housing. You know, Olympia Master Builders were trying to do that forever. But when you got fifty to sixty thousand dollars in permit fees just to build a house, that's not affordable housing. I mean, my first house didn't even cost that much. Go ahead, Kevin. Uh, my concern about this is similar to our uh, cultural land plus. Uh, it's we've got a buildable land report that says we don't need to have the excess of commercial, but we do have an extra housing. I think we also need to consider that this is, if you're going to have arterial commercial, this really is the spot to have it. I don't disagree with that. Yeah. And if the county goes through and puts conditions or zoning implements in there that impediments in there that make it so they don't do what they want with it would not surprise me at all if that depressed the land value enough that the neighbors across the street bought it, brought it under their sovereignty and did whatever they wanted anyways, um, which I think can happen to a lot of stuff down here. So I, me, I'm thinking that both this and the fire station, this rezone is the appropriate thing to do. I think you had something. Oh, yes. Oh, okay. Um, but I don't have to be right on everything, which I haven't been tonight. So uh, do we want to take a poll on this one? Okay, I'm going yes on it. So uh, Helen is, okay. Do we want to have a separate discussion about the fire station or do the same kind of things apply to it? Same. I think the same analysis applies to it as well. So I'm good with that one. Are you? Are you? Oh, you're good with that one. Well, the additional consider that a separate facilities. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It was different enough for you that you're on board. Okay. So that's what you have us. Are are we? Yeah. No, Helen. Right. Yeah. Oh, unanimous. Fantastic. All right. Uh, Morgan. Okay, um, it is currently zoned uh, as industrial, and they're requesting a three zone to arterial. Sure, we do have thoughts on that one. Well, I do. Yeah. <laughs> well, we I don't sure it work on the east side of the, you know, the freeway, but it's kind of. So you don't want it to it's it's industrial now. Oh, is it on the west side? It's on the west side. I'm not concerned about it. Yeah. It's on the east side. It's on the northeast side of. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking at. Yeah. Yeah, there's a different transportation. He said I five north of twelve, and the request is to go from an industrial zoning to arterial commercial zoning. I personally like the idea of getting this industrial first. Well, like industrial and commercial are probably the most intrusive zonings, but if it's one or the other, I'd probably rather have the commercial than the industrial. I think my one question would be kind of a Scott question, I think. Um, is there some value to having industrial uses closer to um, agricultural areas to support agriculture? In my, so essentially, I would just follow Scott's lead on this question. Um, so, I mean, there could be, but the problem is I highly doubt there's any. Especially on one acre piece. So I never, that's a one acre piece, too. So. Oh, okay. Well, the industrial adjacent to ag, yeah. but then, you know, yeah, I mean, someone who fixes tractors next to me. <laughs> yeah, I think it's 
it's really not adjacent to anything. I mean, it's across the street from the part of the Deskins property. Mm -hmm. And then everything, like everything to the north of that is already developed. Yeah. There's the truck wash and the coffee shop. And, you know, All right. Are the on the farm? Oh, that is way farther than the almost on the farm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to give that one a thumbs yeah, up. All right. All right. <laughs> okay, next slide. The tribal trust lands uh, are developed to the Great Bowl Park and is proposed to come down uh, to our three on the from the I have a hard time telling the tribe that we're not going to do what they want. Yeah. It is the case we've been wanting to do. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, I looked at this with more of a thing. They built the Great Wolf Lodge, and this is what zoning fits it. So, yeah. Yeah. We're yeah. going to put it. Yeah. So. Any complaints on this one? Yeah. We'll call that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wouldn't be a bad idea. In that case, you ask for a sidewalk? Please. Did we ask for a sidewalk? Well, ask for a sidewalk. We could probably ask for anything. And... <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, we we heard that a lot at the um, what was that meeting? At? The open house. Mm -hmm. If they say no, we're right where we are. Yeah. So no reason not to ask. All right. Uh, let's move on to the expansion request. Uh, right. On slide twenty-two. So there are three properties requesting an expansion of the APA, and there is a staff summary and explanation by the staff that work on these properties. Uh, slide 23. Uh, the Wolnowski property is currently undeveloped and is uh, requesting a zone change to medium to high density of one four. Uh, next slide. The Deskin property has a Residential use. Uh, it is requesting a change to our traditional commercial from our home five. Uh, and slide 25. The Black Lake Quarry property is currently being used for mining and is requesting a change to light industrial. Uh, and the applicant has also provided additional suggestions and public comment. Next slide. We get just an overall map for uh, reference. All right, um, slide 22. Slide 22. Uh, stop somewhere. Yes. So snap out. Uh, for the requirements uh, in the countywide planning policies, um, that would need to show a public benefit uh, beyond that property for the general municipal. Uh, I have not been provided with evidence that supports that. Is that where you're at on that? Yep. That's an interesting time. Yeah, you do. Uh, I would actually probably take them one by one. I, I think we should go by them one by one, yeah. but it's good to know where you guys are at already. Mm -hmm. um, which one you want to start with? Um, I mean, I would start with uh, the Wilmoski property. Wilmoski property. Okay. Mm -hmm. You got something on that? Yeah, I think the I I think that public benefit <laughs> question. I think this might actually satisfy a public benefit. Um, we have a declared homelessness emergency, for example, in the county. Um, housing supply is drastically in the county. So I think you could actually probably make, in my estimation, an argument that it does satisfy the, um, that public benefit. And what was it like overwhelming? Yeah. Do you guys want to respond to that? I, I think there's a need. I, well, I, I know what we've talked about in the past yeah. that we have to demonstrate the need for housing. I'm not sure that housing, affordable housing in Grand Mount is going to solve this problem. I just don't think that. I don't, I don't think they have the services down there. You know, but yeah, even, uh, you know, we talked about services not being available down there. And the whole, um, 
food, everything you know, so. Depends on which homeless problem you're talking right. about. Right, and then that's what, I guess that's a fair and question. The smaller homeless problem, which are the people that are underemployed and can't afford a house, or the larger homeless problem, which is chemically dependent and mentally ill. Well, they're both kind of. Yeah. And so if you provide some housing and low cost, some of those people who are underemployed but don't have a house to live in. So so now you're asking for subsidized housing. No, no, they have to pay subsidized, they just don't pay the down payment on a half million dollar house. Or so and I I mean on an apartment. I mean, yeah. one thing, you know, yeah. In an apartment, you need first and last month. And a lot of them that we've had in the homeless shelters I've been involved in, they just don't have that. But this type of thing could perhaps provide them. So and we they can do that. And we talked about it earlier, and I think this doesn't solve homelessness, but one of the pieces that you, we need to resolve to solve homelessness is the availability of housing. I, I think to I with Commissioner Gay on this. I think too, when we think about the, the buildable lands report and the housing portion of this, I think a lot of the Southern area of the UTA that is residential, that's going to be more AC or something else. We're not gonna have that for building houses. And then the idea that we're gonna have infill in this middle section, just South of highway 12, I don't think that the infill is going to happen there for decades and decades and decades. I don't think the economic forces are there to do it. So I think that increasing the housing supply, I think the buildable lands report might not accurately reflect everything that's there. I'm not saying it's wrong, but I'm saying it might not be right because of the loss of, of housing stock below and the lack of infill in the north. So the, the public benefit of expanding that UGA and putting some higher density homes in there I really like that idea a lot. Hey, were you trying to say something, grabbing my attention? Uh, just that if um, if that's what you're looking for, do you want to do a, a vote on? I think we're pretty split right now, but we can figure out exactly how split we are. Um, that costs would dense the building you know, is there transportation planning that's adequate to that and also the utility element. Um, there would need to be a little bit more information obtained um, most likely at the SIPA process. So um, if you recommended uh, an expansion to the urban growth area, that would then go to um, the urban growth management committee uh, and they would consider whether or not they agree with you or if they want to provide a different recommendation. And then um, you could also do um, a SEPA checklist, which would involve uh, possibly um, discussing about uh, an environmental impact statement, requiring a transportation study on that property, and possibly how an addition of transportation um, to that property would affect the urban growth area as a whole. Um, it may require uh, an edit to the transportation chapter, but I think we would need more information. We would need to know more information about that first. Um, so it, they'll definitely be considered. It would just be later in the process. And I think there's also a, you know, we were worried about the, the affordability of the utilities down here too. And this is, this would be, you know, in my, you know, in my judgment, and I'm not an engineer and I have no studies on this. Um, this is a relatively dense, relatively, relatively easy to serve area that could bring more great areas into the system. What we'll give a um, this discussion doesn't have to be over, but I give a um, just kind of a feel for the room to see how people feel about this particular one. And a thumbs up would be to approve the expansion of the UGA and the zoning change. And thumbs down would be to not for the Wilmot ski only. For Wilmot ski only. I'm going to stick with the stuff, but I could be one over. If I care about this. Okay, I'm going to do this in this one. On the fence. Okay, yeah. we'll have to I mean, come back to this. the idea of adding housing down there. Yeah, but that's a, but 30 acres is a lot of housing. It is. And Doesn't mean it all come at the same time, though. I don't. 
put it. And it's also, I mean, having been down, that's, that's a lot of traffic for that area. It is. And, but on the other hand, um, you know, somebody said something about infill, you know, to, to the east of that. And yeah, that's going to be a long place because I'll bet you 90% of that housing is less than 20 years old. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of this, this stuff in the, the south end of this towards the creek, that is all fairly new housing. Well, let's uh, move forward with that one being undecided but not looking good. I guess what I would like to know a little bit more about when you say that, because um, I think we've talked about this before, as far as the expansion of the UGA, can we justify it? And I mean, it seems like I've heard that we've had, but there's enough housing down there to take care of the next 20 years. So can we justify adding this to the UGA? Jim, I, I think part of that justification is that all the housing building could still happen here and the infill would happen. But it's a, and I could be wrong, but I don't believe that the infill is going to happen. And I don't believe that all the opportunities to build houses in the southern part of this UJ would actually happen because I think they're going to go commercial. I, I, I could be wrong. And no, I, I, I believe what you're saying. I totally agree with that. But the, it's the way it's set up right now. And so we kind of have to go with that rather than what we think what is guessing? going to happen. I, I, I'd say I'm, I, I think I'm in the same area as you that the the specifics of any of these requests i can't even really i may think that they're a good idea but but i can't get past can i justify expanding the uga and if 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 that's a no i can't even look at the details of of these to make a decision and you that's think right. the, the housing need is enough of a justification well i don't think so okay I, so I, no, because I, I think it's i think there is enough uh there is enough land to build housing okay. on down and, there and I think this is where the, an emergency is time now. An emergency doesn't have 30 years to build out. Um, also, I, I also worry about displacement because infill equals displacement here. And not knowing exactly what each of those houses is or how much they're worth if we lose there. Um, I, this is an opportunity to avoid some displacement in all likelihood, or at least. Right. And as I recall, Kayla said that in the building the lands report, how many houses they think they or they think they got twenty two percent excess. It did they, they they didn't really take into account any real commercial activity down there. They, they looked at it as being pretty much the same. And so well, you know, it's good you're going to have um, commercial growth and add employment. Let's um. We're not to conclusion on that one, so let's come back to it again at a later time and move on to our next. Sorry, should we real quick? Do we have half of the overhead of the water down here? Is that thing we plant that in for a second to up? I don't want to think that I had, maybe I only had some on the cover system that's back here. Is this, is, is this property is affected by that? Uh, the entire area is considered a critical aquifer feature zone. Yeah, that is the entire county. Um, a development of that size, well, all developments um, have to follow stormwater requirements. Uh, they would have to be on a system, they have to be on our utilities. Uh, yeah, that would most likely also be investigated further during the CEPA process. So, uh, are we doing Black Lake Core next or Deskin? Uh, let's do that again. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, it currently has around the number. I'm with that. I guess we got it. <laughs> Is anybody in favor of asking? Okay, we got a unanimous no one to ask me. Okay, then Black Lake Quarry. Black Lake Quarry. Go fast. Well, I'd actually like to say something on Black Lake Quarry that we got to, that I think we should consider. The idea, so right now it's a mine, and they get to continue mining and continue mining and 
they can go deeper. I don't know how far their permit says they can go, but they can continue to mine. Hundred foot below the water. Yeah. If they got this rezone, they're going to quit mining. They're going to do their mine restoration plan, and then they're going to build it out to something that is less, in my opinion, almost anything would be less environmentally impactful. Now, that's I could be wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. Uh, well, um, from what very little information we have, uh, I did speak to the county hydrologist um, about the potential impact to an active mining site versus an industrial zone area, uh, and he had more concerns with the industrial zone. He area. did. That was Kevin Hansen. Yes, um, but like I said, that is only looking at it from that perspective. There's no other information. Kevin Hansen's opinion is important. <laughs> Yes, that is what he's. Okay. Well, the other thing, and I, I don't even know if we can do this. If so, they own the land just to the east of that that is in the UGA, mm -hmm. and that is zoned the way that they want it. Mm -hmm. Can we kick them out of the? I mean, can we relieve them from the UGA? <laughs> do they need to be in the UGA? And what would happen if we gave them continuous zoning, but all outside of the UGA? They'd probably still be happy with that because they'd get everything they want, but they wouldn't be in the UGA anymore. They'd have to find their own urban services to do their own thing. I don't know. Maybe that's not even people. I have no idea. So that is beyond the scope of what we're doing here at the moment. So we're looking at their request, which is to expand the UGA. If you're asking us to take a look at reducing the UGA in that particular area, it's not something that's in our scope nor something that we have evaluated. Yeah. You know, they, they are they asking for I like the way you got to cut right here. <laughs> okay. But are they only asking for the region expansion area? Not in the. They just want to co change now, right? Uh, so their initial application was a rezone to their property that's located outside of the urban growth area. Um, they provided additional, an additional um, proposal as public comment uh, that instead of requesting an expansion to the UGA, they would, they, they would consider uh, a rezone to rural resource industrial with a code change to expand the allowed uses in that zone. But those allowed uses, Kevin is not as hip on as it being a mine. Correct. Yeah, go ahead. So uh, for me, I think this is not a bad proposal, but my question is, um, would this be something that would be more appropriate to consider during the actual conflict update? Like would these zoning maps get a solid look at and that would be the right time to do it? Because I don't know if we, for the UGA expansion, this one, I don't really see that, especially hearing from the hydrologist, um, don't know that we could satisfy that. Well, to, to back that up, I guess we should talk about docket items because we do have an industrial lands study that we're going to do soon. But that is the industrial lands going to come out before or after we do comp plan? Before. I hope so. so if, if you would uh, like to not consider this property at this time and instead review it with uh, the industrial land study, that is also an option. Do it at another time. Well, I, I still like came out of the but I can talk a little bit about timing of the industrial land study if that's helpful for the planning commission. Okay. Uh, so that item is currently on the official docket and we do have a contract in effect and underway which there is a third party consultant who's doing um, the bulk of the work on that project and conducting the study. We expect that that contract will go through most of this, uh, most of 2023, sorry, we're not quite in 2023 yet. And uh, we'll probably have a final study document by the end of next year. So the research will be done prior to moving into the comprehensive plan update. Would, would this, would the Black Lake Quarry be a part of that study? Uh, it, it's a holistic look at industrial lands throughout Thurston County, the rural and urban growth areas, and it doesn't just look at uh, rural resource industrial, it also looks at light industrial and uh, 
commercial zones that allow for heavier uses. So yes, this property um, could potentially be affected by that, but it, it's more of a 10,000 look at where, if we need more industrial lands and where we could appropriately site those or what kind of changes we could make to our development regulations to uh, better accommodate those uses. So um, yes, we could see changes that affect properties like this. Okay, so uh, thumbs up if kicking this to industrial lands report decision time. Yeah, I'm good with that. Okay. Seven to one. Uh, well, uh, sure, since it's probably going to come back anyway. It's going to come back either way. Okay. Is that what you mean? It's going to come back. What sure. was the process if, if there were one to uh, consider reducing the size of the UGA? That's Sorry, what, what would the process look like to consider reducing the size of the UGA and taking property out? Um, we would have to look at what kind of zoning that is, what that would um, mean to the UGA, um, and is it appropriate to remove it from the UGA because there are rules around adding and subtracting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And because that particular area is zoned industrial, um, we'd have to complete the study, but it would be um, highly unlikely that we would be able to justify removing it because it would not have a rural character in order to remove something from the PGA. It would need to have that rural character and put something into the, excuse me, into the rural area that is of um, that urban design. Fair enough. Fair enough. Go ahead. Then I really have a problem with this request, the original request for the property, the property owner. Uh, which I, which property? Black Lake. Okay. Lake. I'm really, I really find it distasteful because I'm sure that when they applied for their permits for gravel mining, there was, you know, very strong assurances that nobody would dig that deep under the water table and cause water problems. You know, to not only use it as sort of a threat or a, a leverage to try to say, well, we'll keep digging down lower if you don't want to switch it over to I don't know if they've actually said that. That's just yeah. something that. Well, the representative for that did toy her and toy her strategic. So it's just very clear said yeah. that it was a lot of good. He said you sh should approve this a little variety of public benefit of the, of the reduction in the threat to the water system. Um, I also find that disingenuous. And, and distasteful from Toyer Strategic Services because he has already known that you just Google his name to be represented Panatoni. And Panatoni wants warehouses all over, not just Thurston County, but the entire I 5 corridor. And, you know, look, if they want them, there's lots of land that's zoned for warehouses. Buy that land and build warehouses. But what they're looking for is cheap land that they can flip easily. And I'm not interested in making them more rich. And if you like the location of that and you think gravel operation is not ideal, like can you imagine an Amazon warehouse there? And where would hell the trucks go? Like that would be a traffic nightmare everywhere, no matter which route they would have to go. How do they get on the freeway? A thousand trucks a day. They're going to cause huge traffic problems everywhere. So I think it's a massive difference from its current use. Right. Jessica? Wait. Oh, we can yeah. we break. So we're we're done, right? Yeah. Do you, well, I, I I should ask you guys. Do you want to also consider the option of just saying no on Black Lake? That's what you guys want. Okay, then we'll we'll take a poll on whether or not instead of waiting for industrial lands report, just a flat out no now. I kind of would like to see the report. It will still show up in the report at some point or another because it's still an industrial land. But we can, instead of saying that we're going to kick this until after the industrial, they could re, they could redo things after their report, couldn't they? Well, so, it's is there a material difference? Really. Okay. I mean, if if we made a recommendation against something, does that 
start a clock where they can't reapply for a period of time or something. Mm -hmm. No. Does anybody have a uh, thumbs, a solid thumbs down on Black Lake Quarry independent of the uh, industrial lands report? Kind of All right. Yeah. Probably, yeah. Let's, just go, let's just go no on. No. That's not the that's not the trigger for the decision we made to be made. Okay. Okay. Because it's still, I don't know that it would satisfy that expansion. Okay, right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay, no on like like Corey. Okay. Um, in that case, uh, it sounds like there wasn't necessarily an uh, agreement on the sub area plan itself. Uh, so, one option could be to recommend um, not adopt that draft. Uh, so, it sounds like we were leaning towards recommending adopting that draft. Uh, and then we've got a deal on all. Uh, uh, I just wanted to do a couple. I mean, I don't want to. I'm. I want to vote yes on the code, but I just wanted a couple of things, little teeny tiny things. Yes. So should we do that now, or should we vote on the other things? Well, we've already voted on everything else, right? Well, that, that was it. So that was that was just to get a feel of things. Yeah, or um, get a feel of things. Yeah. If, uh, We're not making a final decision on any GMA stuff tonight. Right now. Yes, oh, we uh, so um and if you're ready to do that, you can take it in pieces so that we only have one or two pieces to bring back to you. Um then we can show some progress. Yeah, what do you do the properties? So the properties part we get that done. So you can just a couple of things that I'm sure we can talk about with the development code that will then wrap things up. Then we can do development code and the properties and the expansion, and then we can circle back to the subarea plan. Okay. Yeah, I, I really don't see it. Okay. Then we can be done with it. Okay. So, uh, okay. So my concern, my main concern, you already covered one of the big ones, which is that waterfront crash, and then the next one was on page ten, the patches. To promote high quality development that will protect and enhance property value. I'd like to take the word enhance out of there. Can we do that? Is that the problem? Protect property values, but not enhance. So this is again page 10. This is just One, a policy. Is it? So, uh, so if we if we go through this. And you make your suggestion, and we want to move forward with that as the vote. We can do that. Um, so yeah, let's take because because Helen did have a question earlier um, that she was trying to understand if she could just suggest a change, and I would make the change, or if it has to be a whole like the commission. That's what she's asking the commission at the moment. So yeah. You're going to float your idea by us to get rid of any yeah. property. Yeah, this recommendation has to come through the group yes. to be right. okay. Like, yeah, but if we would change it, does anybody? Yeah, once I, I start from does the anybody want to challenge the idea to remove enhanced property values from that golden policy? It still protects property, it still protects, but just work to get to that discussion we had about you know right. complexity. I think if this was property values, all plan things. You know, kind of a general goal policy of the county, but this is actually a development guideline. So, I mean, I think anything. Yeah. So, anything, whatever you're applying to do is going to be to probably going to be to protect and enhance the value of the property. I think you can make a lot of Yeah. I, I agree with you. I'm okay with Helen's suggestion. Mm -hmm. okay. You can look at Helen's yeah. suggestion on that particular one. Your next one. Okay, then I'll just do one more. Um, and that's on the electric vehicles. 
in the um, parking lots. And it's page 20. Uh, and, well, basically, um, instead of looking it up, I'm just going to quickly say I, uh, my interpretation, and you can tell me if I'm right, is that what it's saying right now is that if you want to put in an EV parking spot, you can take that out of the landscaping requirement, like the, the chunk that you need for, to have landscape in the parking lot. And I'd like to um, remove it from that. It's, it's um, landscaping within parking lot. It's on page 20, number E5E. E. Um, and I'm not sure I understand it correctly, but I think what it's saying is, well, what it says is alternative features such as electric vehicle charging stations, alternative stormwater treatment and other attractive and sustainable substitutes to a landscaping area may be approved on a case-by-case -case basis. And I'm just wondering, if, um, I don't wanna trade uh, live ground covered shrubs for electrical vehicle charging stations. I think that should just be part of the parking lot. And if anything, we should be talking about requiring you know, as part of the design standards, we should be requiring that they have a certain number of EV spots at this point. So I will add a so, note here. Um, that was actually requested as a change by the current planners. Mm -hmm. And so it would be on a case-by-case -case basis by the director of um, development services after an environmental review. So that was one thing suggested by staff. Uh I didn't catch it until just now, but that code is probably out of compliance with the municipal stormwater permit um, because it's probably referring to something like low impact development, um, stormwater management, which is actually supposed to be all of the county's codes and enforceable documents were supposed to have been updated to ensure that low impact development and stormwater management is preferred and commonly used. And if it's at least the language is misleading because it's not alternative, it should be. This, this is regarding water. landscaping for visual buffers. Oh, I know. There was a piece in there about alternative uh, stormwater. Yes. As an alternative to stormwater. And maybe if it was on a case by case basis, so they would be checking to make sure that it would still meet regulations. And there is a section in here, I'm trying to remember where it was with public works. They requested that I add a section that says this does not go above stormwater regulations. Um, I'm trying to remember where that is. Sorry, I was talking about the other group. Yeah. 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 Well, so anyway, it could just it maybe we should consider just removing E altogether, or sh should we just? I, I just didn't want to substitute lands, you know, electric vehicle charging stations for landscape. Yeah, and it's it not. It sounds like you don't want to substitute stormwater treatment, alternative stormwater treatment either. Well, and to your point, the county did adopt low impact development. It's so. It's a, it's a long story. Uh, <laughs> but. Uh, Does it help in uh, the uh, one of the first? <laughs> well, I, I would like to, to see if this might yeah. help. Um, one of the added in by our some of our stormwater team uh -huh. when they reviewed this was these guidelines do not supersede Thurston County Road Standards, Drainage Design and Erosion Control Manual, or Thurston County Development Standards for Water and Sewer Systems. Would that plus on a case by case basis after an environment. Meet what you're not. Mm -hmm. So, no, not necessarily. It's okay. We'll move on. So, yeah. you're part of the Ellen's change? Um, what is the change? Ellen's motion to strike or 5E. Or, well, I'm happy to do that or just take electric vehicles out. I mean, uh, I guess it is. It's electrical vehicle, electrical vehicle charging stations, alternative stormwater treatment. And other attractive and sustainable substitutes to a landscaping area. So then I would be, I think, yeah, I think I just moved it, remove that. And then just remove electrical vehicle charging station from that option. So whichever, whichever. I would just 
I, if we were going to do it, I would only propose electric vehicle. It's yeah. not that it's raw. It, it's a long, 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 long story. Okay. And it's a well, I have stormwater electric. land use interface that's broken everywhere. Can we, so, can we see a show of thumbs for removing electrical vehicle charging stations from? Okay, thank you. They're, they're not required anywhere else in the code, just to clarify. Okay. And then what? I, I, but the, but I think the point is that we're not going to. We don't them. want electric vehicle stations to be able to add parking spots and reduce, yeah, yeah. reduce landscape. But there was just one that was the response. You know, there it is. I, I'm going to push. Okay, we're going to get this Yes. Well, um, River Rock. The requirement for River Rock. To be part of the base of freestanding and monument signs. It says it's uh, a 12 A B uh, design of all freestanding monument signs. The base of all freestanding and monument signs shall be designed with river rock to maintain a consistent unifying theme. I don't think requiring the mining of river rock to make signs is a good. It's consistent with um, county policy because we want to keep River Rock where is it required elsewhere in the county to use River Rock? No, uh, not that I know, but this was part of the 1996. And that's, I do have a couple examples of it in this area where it has been used. And I, as I understand it, so it was just used to be a unified theme. So oh. it's part of the design. Yeah, it's part of the design. Yeah. 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 It's just for look. Okay, so I think you could keep it, but it's not. I think calling it river rock is probably the wrong thing. Well, it's yeah. a certain size like pit run that you yeah. right because you're not going to actually stone. stone. Yes, it's just rounded stone. They don't mm -hmm. actually go dry. Well, I was going to say it's not technically defined as anything. That's so coming out. It is. <laughs> it's just a visual of this look. But they like, manufacture it also. Yeah, they grind. They, they, yeah. they manufacture it for. That kind of thing. I mean, it's not even rock. So, are you wanting something more like, shall we design with natural stone or just remove it altogether? Personally, I, I just remove it altogether. I, I'm not from Grand now, so I don't know how important this unifying theme. I mean, it must have been important yeah. enough yeah. that they actually put it in to yeah. begin with. <laughs> it was also mentioned in the Chehalis tribes plan right. of wanting to natural features within the design elements so that is part of why i left it in because it kind of tied into it and i wanted to have this conversation yeah. Well, yeah we could change the wording to make it more environmentally friendly use of what would you rocks i think it was consistent with is, did the, does the tribal language on the way i don't know about their codes this was just in the 2009 plan that they did with scj where they took community input and a lot of the community input was like, yes, we like a natural or an indigenous theme. And I think if we could stay consistent with that, it's a whole thing. And there are quite a few. So, I'm sorry, I, I, I don't want to get too into this. So, in the non tribal jurisdiction areas of Grand Mound, there are signs with the river rock, like Starbucks has river rock at its base avenue, as so. But then the tribe isn't doing river rock, but they are doing. Some natural appearing stones. So even the tribe's not doing river rock. Natural appearing stone. <laughs> oh, because I don't really know what well, stone it is. Like, river, river rock could be natural uh, uh, appearing stones, could be river rock. Mm -hmm. Yes. And they could be interchangeable. And so if they have some river rock they really want to use, it. Okay, so, so if we change this to natural appearing stones, it solves all the problems? I think so. I think river rock refers more to. Rounded, rounded. rounded. Yeah. yeah. You know, the stuff like the, the sandstone is going to be more square yeah. or slate or something like um, that. Hard rock that they use, you know, it's going to be angular. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, because when you go someplace and buy river rock, it's not like big boulders. No. It's, I mean, the biggest rocks in it are going to be once you can hold your hands. So, Scott, are you okay if we just call this naturally appearing stone? Um, I think it needs to be, I don't know what the right term is, but I think it needs to be more specific. Does it? Because I think that's, that's the idea they were going for, is we want this look in 
this area to kind of say, you know, it just here it is. Stone consistent with the area. Five centimeters. I guess what I'm what I'm here is I've got to go along with what Scott said a little bit. If if it was natural appearing stones, I mean, could it be a big boulder or something? I mean, you open up the kind of the interpretation of what what is a natural appearing stone. Go ahead. What river rock or similar? Yeah, in that way you're not in the court. I mean, I don't know. I just yeah, I and just, then. Like we want to keep the door open to this environment way of having some people in Graham be on the line. What's on the gas of River Rock? <laughs> river Rock or naturally appearing shelf. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Only Locally <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, okay. we have an overall proposal. So, we got an overall yes to adding in language that says or naturally, naturally appearing stone. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Give the developer an option. <laughs> okay, what's next? So, here's I got a, here's a picture of the desire and kind of. Maya, can you? There's the sign. Help me with. Uh, proposing this recommendation. Mute button, looking for the unmute button. Um, yes, so I don't have tallies of the thumbs up, thumbs down items. I got some of them, but it was hard to see on Zoom. So um, let's walk through those real quick and then I'll help craft this motion. So we so, have uh, agreement on the 13 county code changes with the recommendation provided by Commissioner Wheatley, uh, and then agreement on uh, a rezone change to uh, A, B, C, and D. Um, there was not an agreement on uh, all of the urban. Okay. So no change to the urban growth areas or uh, Wilmofsky, Deskin, Black Lake, Quarry properties. Well, we there was not a consensus agreement on, on Wilmofsky. On Wilmofsky. So are we are we waiting on Wilmofsky? Because then we'd have nine. We have a tiebreaker. We can have one more chance to talk about Lomoski. Okay, so we're going to uh, move these uh, recommendation on expansions to the next meeting. Right. Can we do all of them but Lomoski? Do they have to be batched? Can we do everything but Lomoski? Yes, we could. Let's do everything but Lomoski. Okay. Okay. Okay, so the recommendation for the urban growth area expansion is uh, recommending. No change to the urban growth area for the Deskin and Black Lake Quarry proposals. Yes, so it would be the second second motion. The highlighted yellow is wherever the Planning Commission has landed. So move to recommend no change to the Grand Mound urban growth area and to make no change to the land use and associated zoning of Deskin and Black Lake Quarry properties. That would be the second motion. Um, I can edit. Make that. So somebody needs to pull off one mosque and get that motion. Okay. 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 I'll do it. I, uh, I move to recommend no change to the Grand Mound urban growth area and to make no change to the land use and associated zoning of the Deskin and Black Lake Quarry properties. We move. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, the motion is to recommend no change to the Grand Mound uh, urban growth area and to make no change to the land use zoning of Duskin and Black Lake Quarry properties. Wait, did I get that right in the first sentence? Yeah. Yes. And does that still leave open the opportunity to talk about Wawaski later? Yes. yes. Okay. 
Okay, call for the vote. Commissioner Passenger. Aye. Commissioner Wheatley. Aye. Commissioner Nelson. Aye. Commissioner Simmons. Aye. Commissioner Harmon. Aye. Commissioner Day. Aye. Commissioner Hanson. Aye. Commissioner Casino. Aye, that passes unanimously. Okay, so now the next part is on the um okay, here we go. On the subarea plan itself. And we were Oh, well, let's let's hit. So, uh, Commissioner Day had something. I'd like to make one suggestion. So, on the in the space where it says alternative stormwater, alternative stormwater is actually gray stormwater infrastructure right now. So, what you're actually trying to say is low impact development stormwater because it's required by law. Yeah, instead of alternative, just yeah. LID. LID. But LID, because if you say alternative, you actually need the alternative LID is gray infrastructure. So let's walk through this first motion. Uh, Grand Mount sub area plan. Did did we come to a resolution on that with changes as suggested? No, no. we're no. coming back to that. Okay, so we will bring that item back. And we're just covering the land use amendments and the Thurston County Code. So going through the land use amendments, Steel Hammer was a thumbs up. Yes, yes it was a, a thumbs up for uh, the all of them. But yes. yes. All but Jackson and Sin. Yes. When are we? Just, yeah. the, just the land use amendments. So um, there was a unanimous thumbs or sorry. There was. I think it was six to two for Steel Hammer. Yeah, six to two for Steel Hammer. Yeah, for Fire Station, Morgan, and the Tribes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then no on Jackson and Singh. Correct. Unanimous. Okay. All right. So move to recommend an amendment to four. Land use and rezoning amendments, including Steel Hammer Fire District 14, Morgan, and Tribal Trust Land properties. Do I have those four correct, Kate? Yes. And an amendment to the Thurston County Code chapters 20.15, 20.21A, 20 20.25, 20.27, 20.28, 20.40, 20.44. 20.45 and 2036 to incorporate Grand Mound design guidelines and lot width standards. Uh, with recommended changes. We'll go here first. Don't we need to pull out the steel hammer so that they're going to be yes going on the other ones? Yeah. That's exactly what I was going to say. I think we should bash the ones that were unanimous right. and separate from the one that was not. Oh. It's not a big deal. Uh, just so that the vote is accurately recorded right. in for history. Uh, that's, that's part of the record from our. Will our meeting minutes reflect the individual votes on each project? Yes. You mean, if, enough, if it's a resolution, I mean, the right of vote for the resolution. Are, yeah. you, are you worried about like some just like maybe like a minority report on the steel hammer or something? Well, and it's just procedural too. I mean, I just yeah. don't, I, I feel like otherwise, and it's not just not a no, I'm a no on that particular vote, but it seems like if you if you bunch together things that are unanimous, something where there's a difference of opinion, you're kind of compelling the person that's a difference of opinion to vote yes on wow. everything. I or guess vote so. no on everything. It's just simply yeah. You want to address that? So it's just the kind of I just think it's more accurate. Yeah, and it's also more accurate. So, you would rather have a sequel of Steel Hammer and Chad do those two separate because they are different um, than the unanimous vote for. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, but it's quick, but it, it just okay. seems more uh, just, correct. Yeah. yeah. So, we'll have. Can you submit that motion? Okay. It looks like she's the main okay. okay. motion. Mm -hmm. And so I'm hearing that we want to take Steel Hammer out and have that as a separate motion. Correct. Okay. Is the Planning Commission okay with me adding in 
oops, sorry, mm -hmm. the Jackson and Singh at the end, just to capture that there was um, a recommendation of no change to that property. Yes, that was unanimous. Yep. Okay. So now it's just the three, and then Jackson and Sin at the end, and Thurston County Code chapters. My OCD is wondering if twenty point three six needs to be placed in order. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to read it. I can read it that way if you want. That's fine. Okay, Commissioner Hanson's got a motion. Moves recommended amendment to three land use and rezoning amendments, including Fire District fourteen, Morgan, and Tribal Trust land properties. An amendment to the, and an amendment to the Thurston County Code chapters 20.15, 20.21a, 20.25, 20 20.27, 20.28, 20.36, thank you, 20.40, and 20.44, and 20.45, and to incorporate Grand Mound design guidelines and lot list standards with recommended changes. Move to recommend no change to the land use and associated zoning of the Jackson and Singh property. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay. So the motion is to recommend an amendment to the three land use and rezoning amendments, including Fire District 14, Morgan, and Tribal Trust Lands properties, and an amendment to the Thurston County Code chapters 20.15, 20.21a, 20 20.25, 20.27, 20.28, 20.36, 20.40, 20.44. 20.45 and to incorporate Grand Mound design guidelines and lot width standards with recommended changes. Move to recommend no change to the land use and associated zoning to the Jackson and Seam properties. Is there any discussion on the motion? Call for the vote. Commissioner Passenger. Aye. Commissioner Wheatley. Aye. Commissioner Nelson. Aye. Commissioner Simmons. Aye. Commissioner Carmen. Aye. Commissioner Day. Aye. Commissioner Hansen. Aye. Commissioner Casino. Aye. That motion carries unanimously. Would you care to make another motion? Sure. Is it skill hammer? That should be a skill hammer. I could probably just swing it. Well, <laughs> recommended amendment to one land use. Oh, I lost it. One land use. <laughs> something that, no, that's got too small for me. Include uh, one land use and rezoning amendment, including steel hammer property. And uh, actually, we don't need the rest of it because we already just did it. Oh, starting it. Move to recommend an amendment to the land use and associated zoning of the steel hammer property. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, the motion is to recommend an amendment to the land use and associated zoning of the steel hammer property. Is there any further discussion? Call for the vote. Commissioner Passenger. No. Commissioner Wheatley. Yeah. Commissioner Nelson. Aye. Commissioner Simmons. Aye. Commissioner Carmen. Aye. Commissioner Day. Aye. Commissioner Hansen. Aye. Commissioner Casino. Aye. That motion carries 6 2. Thank you very much. Uh, I guess we will catch up with you at a future date on. Well, yeah, at the new building. Thank you very much. This has gone a little longer than we wanted. So we're going to move on to our next business, which is staff updates. And I have no staff updates for everyone. All right. So we're going to move on to the next agenda item, which is the calendar items. And you can see our calendar is a little bit wonky. Uh, December 21st, we are going to cancel. January 4th, we're going to cancel. But we will start back up January 11th at the new building. Uh, is there anybody that doesn't think they can make January 11th? All right. January 18th, we're not going to do because we will do January 25th. Is there anybody that doesn't think they can make January 25th? All right. Well, we're hoping to see everybody January 11th and January 25th at 3000 Pacific. Um, we got a staff update. Oh, well, I just want to remind everybody that we'll be doing people for the uh, with the enjoy plan uh, to set a um, date for that particular meeting. So that will be a joint meeting with City of Olympia, uh, Planning Commission, and Person County. All right. Thank you very much. Does anybody have anything for the good of the order? Please, Miss. Sorry. No, don't be sorry I, at all. I'm just wondering if we start thinking about having another get together. 
the beginning of this minute. We can make the suggestion. Let's talk to the county manager. All right. Anything else? All right. Having no further business, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much for a long night. Thank you. <laughs>